Congratulations to Nikola Jokic on winning the 2021 NBA MVP. Jokic has had an incredible season this year. The stuff that he's doing on the offensive end of the floor is not only incredibly unique and creative, but he's just completely dominating the NBA and has led his Denver Nuggets to a very good spot and ultimately won the MVP this season. This season is arguably the best season by a big man offensively ever. It's right up there for me with Shaq in 2000, but it goes without saying that Jokic has been doing incredible things this season, but it certainly wasn't always easy for Jokic, and he actually has an amazing story that I'm going to be talking about today, where he was pretty much an underdog throughout his entire childhood and when he was trying to get into the NBA as well. He has an amazing story, and like I mentioned today, I'm going to be telling you guys about it. So before we get started, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any new videos, and also, as I mentioned lots of times in my videos, make sure you guys follow me on my Instagram at danieldelari.yt. I'm posting a lot of extra content in my story these days, especially with the playoffs going on and posting a lot of updates, analysis, and reactions to the playoffs in my story, so make sure to go follow me there. With that being said, let's get started with the video about Nikola Jokic's story. So as most of us know, Jokic grew up in Serbia, and when he was only 4 years old, he was surrounded by a lot of rough conditions, and there was actually a war in Serbia around where he lived for 11 weeks, where there were troops bombing around his area, and he said that it was a really traumatic experience for him at a really young age, around 4 years old, and that his family practically lived in the dark. Thousands of people died during this war, and it was around Jokic's area, but luckily for him and his family, they were able to stay safe from all of the violence. But I really find this interesting how he was exposed to such traumatic conditions at a very young age. Now, when Jokic was growing up, he liked to play a lot of sports, and oftentimes it was just him playing them for fun. He liked to play volleyball along with soccer, but especially he liked to play basketball, and the reason he liked to is because he was inspired by his two older brothers, Strahinja Jokic and Nemanja Jokic. Now, originally, Nikola wasn't really as good as his older brothers, but he was inspired by them and continued to develop into a pretty talented young player at a young age, but he had a lot of problems with his conditioning and weight, and there were some pretty severe problems here, and throughout most of Jokic's entire childhood as he was playing basketball, he was described as many of his coaches by actually being obese, and we're not talking about just being a little bit overweight, Jokic was legitimately obese, and despite falling in love with the game of basketball as a child, Jokic really never took the game that seriously and really only played it for fun. He really doesn't have that type of story where some NBA players, as we know, really dedicated their lives at a really young age toward basketball and worked towards it every single day, put in tireless hours and countless hours of conditioning and training, but Jokic definitely wasn't like that. And it was at the point too where his conditioning was so bad, like as I mentioned, he was considered obese and Jokic had severe problems with his overall weight and also his eating and drinking habits. He actually, at one point during his childhood, drank 3 liters of coke every single day and this was just absolutely terrible for his overall health and conditioning and I think we all know this picture of Nikola Jokic. We see memes about it all the time on the internet but this is a legitimate problem for him as a child. He was legitimately obese and like I mentioned he would drink almost three liters of coke every day. He described himself that this was a habit that he couldn't even stop. He had a legitimate addiction to coca-cola and he also ate these Serbian cheese pies every single day for his breakfast. So he had legitimate weight problems and like I mentioned, didn't take basketball seriously oftentimes. Now, despite Jokic's ridiculous conditioning problems, his talent was still undeniable, and he played in an organized basketball league when he was 17. In 2012, he played in the Basketball League of Serbia and played for a club called Mega Vizura. Now, Jokic still had a lot of skill, and that's why he was able to get onto this team, but he was so out of shape that sometimes his coach would not even allow him to come to practice because he was so out of shape, and his head coach on this team actually described that Jokic wasn't even able to do a full push-up. So he's playing basketball at a pretty high level and his conditioning is so bad that he can't do one push-up. But despite Jokic being in such bad shape, he was still able to get minutes and showcase his ridiculous skill. He had this really creative strategy as a personal player of standing near the free throw line and the elbow areas and getting the ball there and simply just looking to make these ridiculous passes to teammates that we've never seen any big 
big man do? And this is really how Jokic pursued a career in basketball with bringing creativity to his game and doing things like, first of all, shooting the basketball and also this ridiculous passing and playmaking ability. And we've never really seen centers do this before up to this point. Centers all the way up until right about now have been back to the basket type of players. And right now we see some guys shoot threes as well, but we've never really seen a center that's had this playmaking ability like Jokic. So he took on the task of doing this and it was described as his brother Nemanja that he had this amazing skill and no one even denied it so the coaches just let him do what he wanted to do and just operate the way that he wanted to on the court. Now he became so good at this strategy that the creativity was really making him successful and he eventually became the best player on his team. His coach allowed him to come to only three practices but even with that he became the best player on the team and led them all the way to the semi-finals. Jokic began to get tons of attention because of his amazing play style and began to get attention from not only scouts but also tons of fans and he became so popular in his area that after games he would be signing autographs for so long that he actually got an inflammation in his hand and had to miss a week of games and practices because of this. So you can see how because of this creative part of Jokic's game with his passing, he was really putting himself on the map. So Jokic continued this strategy and he played in this league for about two years, played consistently and continued to show the creative part of his game with especially his shooting and also that really creative playmaking aspect of his game that especially we see in the NBA now. But originally he didn't actually even want to go into the NBA or at least go into the NBA right away. He wanted to pursue a career with the FC Barcelona Basketball Club and it was his plan the entire career when he was playing in the Serbian league but there was one game where scouts from the FC Barcelona Basketball Club came to see Jokic play and he played so bad in this game that the scouts pretty much ignored him after this game. Jokic described himself that he had four points during this game, three rebounds, and played horrible defense the entire game. And he was planning his entire career, basketball career up to this point to sign with this league and it all fell apart because he played horrible in this one game. He basically just had to sign a few contracts and make it a official that he was going but this didn't work out now this is where i look at this situation and say it's amazing how life works because Jokic playing so terribly in that one game where scouts were watching him turned out to be a huge blessing in disguise he planned his whole career to play for the fc barcelona basketball club but the fact that he actually didn't go there allowed him to pursue his career in the nba a little bit quicker now even though Jokic had the chance to go to the nba here it was still a big struggle for him to actually get drafted there was his weight problems where he really didn't have any actual muscle, he had no athleticism, was very slow out there on the court, and going into the draft weighed 290 pounds, which obviously puts him at a really big disadvantage, especially when it comes to scouting. And also a lot of scouts kind of took the assumption that since he was European and he was also not in very good shape, that they thought he would kind of be like Darko Milicic, one of those softer type of players. And there was, this stereotype was kind of thrown around and it didn't help Jokic's case to get drafted but on draft night he ended up going 41st overall to the Denver Nuggets and even still he does get drafted and now he's in the NBA but getting drafted 41st overall means you're at a really big disadvantage I mean the only other MVP in league history to win an MVP while being a second round pick was Willis Reed and he doesn't even count because there were so few teams back then that he was picked in the second round but he was only picked eighth overall and the lowest draft pick ever to win MVP was Giannis Antetokounmpo, who was the 15th overall pick. And now Jokic is the 41st overall pick, is at a really big disadvantage. And we look at it from the past years before 2014, some of the other players that were picked 41st overall. In 2010, Jarvis Varnado was picked 41st overall. In 2011, Darius Morris was picked 41st overall. In 2012, Tyshawn Taylor was picked 41st overall. And in 2013, Jamal Franklin was picked 41st overall. Hey man, let me know in the comments if you guys have ever heard of any of these players because personally, I haven't. The guys drafted in 2010, 11, and 12 have all averaged 3 points per game for their career and Jamal Franklin has averaged 7.3. So just to put it per into perspective, how much of an underdog you are if you're picked 41st overall, yeah, those are the guys the years prior to Jokic that were picked 41st overall. But
But Jokic defied the odds, and in his rookie season in 2015 and 16, he dedicated most of the season to trying to get in shape and trying to lose weight, and this is really the second biggest turning point of Jokic's career. The first one is when he developed that interesting strategy and creative strategy of working on his passing during games and standing at the elbows in the free throw lines and making ridiculous passing and showing off his skills there, and also developing a three-point shot as a center. But the second one was here, before his rookie season, he was 290 pounds as I mentioned, but before he went into the season, he lost 35 pounds to get down to 255, and this was a big turning point for Jokic. Obviously, it's going to be really hard to succeed in the NBA if you're almost 300 pounds, but Jokic did what he needed to do, dedicated a lot of time to losing weight, and that's exactly what he did. And sure enough, he was rewarded with playing time because of it in his rookie season. The fact that Jokic got himself into decent shape and the fact that in the 2015 season he played in the Adriatic League and averaged 15 points per game, 9 rebounds and 4 assists and won the league's MVP earned him some really consistent playing time in his rookie season despite being a second round pick. And in this rookie season he had a game early in the year against the Spurs where he put up 23 points on 8 of 13 shooting, hit a, hit a 3 on 1 attempt, had 12 rebounds and 3 blocks and that's where really scouts started to see how Jokic has a lot of potential, and this might be the steal of the draft for the Denver Nuggets. He ended up finishing the 2016 season third in Rookie of the Year voting, which is insane considering he was the 41st overall pick, and he averaged 10 points per game, 7 rebounds per game, and 2.5 assists per game on 53% from the field, 33% from 3, and 81% from the line in his rookie season and made the all-rookie first team. Now, in the start of the 2016 and 17 season, this was another big turning point for Jokic's career going forward. He was battling for the center minutes with an ex a more experienced center and a better defensive center in Yusuf Nurkic early in the season, but Jokic started to emerge as the better player. And as this started to get more and more evident, Yusuf Nurkic demanded a trade because he said he didn't believe that two centers could develop properly on the same team together. So Nurkic ended up getting traded that season well before the trade deadline, and then Jokic took off after that. That season, he averaged 17, 10, and 5 with a steal and a block on 58, 33, 83 shooting, and was the runner-up for the Most Improved Player Award. And this is really when he started to show that all-star potential. 2018 was a huge season for Jokic. This is when he took that passing ability and his shooting ability, which is really what made him unique as a center. We all know that with seeing Jokic play in today's NBA, but he took those skills and really applied them into the NBA and dominated centers leading the league in six assists as a center and shooting 40% from three on four attempts per game. He ended up averaging 19, 11, and six on the season with again around a steal in the block on almost 50, 40, 90 as a big man, which as we know is absolutely insane, shooting 50% from the field, 40% from three, and 85% from the line. After this, the pretty, pretty much the rest is history for Nikola Jokic. In 2019 and 20, as we know, he led the Nuggets to a top three seed in the Western Conference, including in 2020. 20, leading them to the Western Conference Final in the bubble, and in both of these seasons, he made the All-Star team out of the Western Conference, made the All-NBA first team in 2019, and the All-NBA second team in 2020. And this season in 2021, we all know what historical stuff Jokic is doing and how he's the well-deserved MVP. He's averaging 26, 11, and 8 this season, one steal and one block per game on 57% from the field, 39% from three, 87% from the line, a 60% effective field goal percentage, and a 65% true shooting, along with being fifth in the league with a 15 box creation. And he led the league in all of the ad advanced stats, player efficiency rating, win shares, offensive win shares, box plus minus, offensive box plus minus, VORP, and was second in the league in player impact estimate and offensive rating. Jokic had an incredible season this year, and he went from a guy who was drinking three liters of coke every day and was considered obese, the 41st overall pick in the NBA draft, all the way to being the MVP of the NBA. Jokic truly defied the odds, and what I find so interesting about his story is how it wasn't really the a typical story like hard work and dedication and hours of days of working out and working on basketball that got him to this position. It was his creativity and his 
unique abilities on the court and how he took those abilities and maximized them and it's just so different than the other stories that we've heard around the NBA from some of the best players in the league today. It's just so interesting how Jokic used his creativity through his shooting and playmaking and he, he said in an interview recently that with his playmaking ability what he does is he takes a mental image of the court and he imagines where everyone will be the second after he takes that mental image and because of this he has this amazing court vision and he always knows where his players are going to be on the court and he has this amazing playmaking ability which no other center in the NBA has right now and because of Jokic's creativity and how he knows he's unique and he uses these abilities he's now taken himself from being a random obese Serbian kid who ate cheese pies for breakfast and three liters of coke every day to the MVP of the NBA his story is truly amazing so there you have it that is the end of today's video that's the insane story of Nikola Jokic and how he really defied the odds and despite being an underdog throughout his entire life he defied the odds and is now the NBA MVP congratulations once again to Jokic on winning the 2021 MVP feel free to comment down below your thoughts on Jokic's amazing story as I mentioned make sure to follow me on Instagram at DanielDelari.yt if you're new be sure to subscribe and I'll see you all next video